I was surprised to learn that counterintuitive to materialistic thought and to every kid who has ever taken a math exam, a computer does not consume energy during actual computation, but will only consume energy when, inter when information is erased from it. Such, such is what happens when a computer's memory is cleared or with the merging of two computational paths where you put in two, pa two bits into a logical operation and you only get one bit out. This counterintuitive fact of in energy expenditure during erasure is formally known as Landauer's Principle. I was also surprised to learn that performing mental arithmetic does not consume any more energy in, in the brain than when you are simply relaxing. In the following study, it was found that cerebral oxygen consumption is unaltered during mental arithmetic. More recent studies find that glucose consumption by the brain is remarkably stable despite widely varying levels of mental activity. In fact, the brain's constant metabolism whether you are resting or whether you are thinking hard about anything, always resembles the metabolism of our bodies as we are strenuously exercising. These experiments are very unexpected for materialists since materialists hold that mind is merely an emergent property of the physical processes of the brain. That is to say, on materialistic presuppositions, why should mental activity, which is presupposed to be the result of and subservient to the material processes of the brain, not vary with, met with the metabolic activity of the brain? Why should the material brain operate at such a constant and optimal metabolic rate despite widely varying levels of mental activity, whereas the rest of the body should correspond in its metabolic activity with our physical activity? The most parsimonious explanation for such a optimal constraint on the brain's metabolic activity, despite widely varying levels of mental activity, is that the material brain was designed, first and foremost, to house the immaterial mind and to give the immaterial mind the most favorable of metabolic environments at all times. And here's a study from another angle, because of the computational requirement of uh, merging two computational paths, as was alluded to in Landauer's principle, and contrary to materialistic presuppositions, that finds that computers will never achieve consciousness because they would be quote unquote continuously hemorrhaging information. Of related interest to Landauer's principle, in terms of its quote unquote beyond belief complexity, the brain is now shown to have more switches than all the computers, routers, and interconnections internet connections on earth and yet the brain despite having more switches than all the computers and routers and interconnect internet connections on earth consumes far less energy 
than a computer of comparable complexity would. This finding strongly suggests to me, because of the heat generated when information is erased during computation and erasure, in other words, because of the heat generated by Landauer's principle, that the information of the mind and or the memories of the mind must be somehow stored on a spiritual level rather than being stored on a material level. Simply put, any computer that had anything close to as many switches as the brain has in as combined an area as the brain is, then the heat generated from Landauer's principle of erasure would become impossible for the computer to dissipate. Thus, the brain is either operating on reversible computation principles no present-day computer can, or computer programmers can come close to emulating, as was elucidated here by Charles Bennett, or else the brain is not erasing in information from its memories as material computers are required to do during computation. This is because our memories are somehow being stored on a spiritual level, as is presupposed by theists, rather than being stored on the material level, as is presupposed by atheists. Research backs this intuition up. The following paper states that, contrary to what would be presupposed in materialism, no one has ever been able to localize memories inside the brain. And neurosurgeon Dr. Michael Egnor states that, the attribution of memory in a psychological sense to a computer is just nonsense, a bizarre confusion of metaphor and reality. Dr. Egnor goes on to bluntly state this, your computer doesn't know a binary string from a ham sandwich. For me personally, when I first realized that it took energy to erase information from a computer and yet no energy was consumed during computation, then that implied for me that information must be physically real and independent of matter and energy since it took energy to erase information from the computer. After all, if you want to do work and move a car or move anything else like a brick, you need to supply energy in order to do the work. And thus, why should energy, any energy at all, be expended by the computer unless real work is being performed on a real entity when it erases information? <sighs> Yet, even though it was a counterintuitive surprise for me to learn that a computer will not consume energy while it is supposedly working during its computation, but will only consume energy during the erasure of its information, it should be noted that let Roth Landauer himself maintain that information in a in a computer is quote-unquote physical. When I first heard that Landauer said information is physical, I first thought that Landauer was directly implying that information is physically real and therefore independent of matter and energy. Yet, upon closer examination, I found out that my first impression of what he meant by his statement information is physical was wrong. Landauer was actually implying that information is physical 
uh, simply because it is inscribed on a physical medium. In fact, Landauer said that Roger Penrose's contention that information has an existence independent of matter and energy was a quote unquote quaint notion. That Landauer would hold that information does not exist apart from its representation in a physical medium was surprising for me. Did the late Roth Landauer really believe that the number four completely disappeared from reality when he erases a representation of the number four from a computer? Apparently he did believe just that since he derided Roger Penrose for his quaint notion of information's independent existence separate from matter and energy. Yet, contrary to what Landauer and other materialists may presuppose, there is much evidence for the physical reality of immaterial information which is independent of matter and energy. In fact, the entire field of mathematics itself presupposes the physical reality of immaterial information. David Belinsky weighs in here and states, There is no argument against religion that is not also an argument against mathematics. Moreover, even though immaterial information can be encoded on a virtual endless variety of material substrates, the meaning of the information that we encode on them never changes from one material substrate to the next. In the following video, Dr. Stephen Meyer states that immaterial information is a very important thing that is real. We buy it, we sell it, we send it down wires. And in the following article, George Ellis goes further in establishing the physical reality of immaterial information, specifically the information software. And he also further states that the mind is not a physical entity, but it is certainly causally effective. Proof of, proof of its existence is the computer on which you are reading this text. And in the following paper, Dr. Andy C. McIntosh, who is Professor of Thermodynamics and Combustion Theory at the University of Leeds, holds that it must be non-material information that constrains biological life to be so far out of thermodynamic equilibrium. Moreover, Dr. McIntosh holds that regarding information as independent of energy and matter resolves the thermodynamic issues and, and invokes the correct paradigm for understanding the vital area of thermodynamic organizational interactions. And in support of Dr. McIntosh's contention that it must be non-material information which constrains biological life to be so far out of thermodynamic equilibrium, information has now been experimentally shown to have a quote-unquote thermodynamic content. Of related note to immaterial information having a thermodynamic content, Classical digital information was found to be a subset of non-local, that is, beyond space and time, quantum information by the following me method, which removed heat from a computer by the deletion of classical digital information. And in direct contradiction to 
Landauer's contention that immaterial information does not exist independent of matter and energy, Dr. Vaccaro states in regard to the preceding experiment that Landauer said that information is physical because it takes energy to erase it. We are saying that the reason it, information, is physical has a broader context than that. And the preceding ex uh, thought experiment has now been experimentally verified in the lab. And it says, and they use the title in the second article here, Information is Physical, which directly contradicted Landauer's intuition of what information was. And although the preceding is certainly very strong evidence for the physical reality of immaterial information, the coup de grace for demonstrating that immaterial is its own distinct physical entity, entity which is separate from matter and energy, is quantum teleportation. Here is a paper that states it is only the information that gets teleported from one place to another. Moreover, this physically real quantum information, which is shown to have, contrary to Landauer's assertion, an existence that is separate from matter and energy, is also found to be conserved. That is to say, the conservation of quantum information means that information cannot be created nor destroyed. As well, this physically real quantum information, which cannot be created or destroyed, is also now found in molecular biology on a massive scale in every DNA and protein molecule. Here are the papers showing that. Besides providing direct empirical falsification of Landauer's claim and of neo-Darwinian claims in general, claims that say immaterial information does not exist apart from its representation on the physical medium. The implication of finding non-local, beyond space and time, and conserved quantum information in molecular biology on such a massive scale in every DNA and protein molecule is fairly and pleasantly obvious. That pleasant implication, of course, being the fact that we now have very strong physical evidence directly implying that we do indeed have an eternal soul that is capable of living beyond the death of our material bodies. In the following video, Stuart Hammerbarth states, it's possible that this quantum information can exist outside the body, perhaps indefinitely as a soul. And again, all papers that have been referenced in this video may be accessed in the paper which I have linked in the video description. Thank you for uh, watching the video.